John chapter number five. Here, verse number two, look what it says. Now there's at Jerusalem by the sheep market of pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches in these, in these lay a great, a great multitude of people, a whole bunch of folk who got a whole bunch of problems. You got blind folk, halt folk, wither folk. And what they're doing, they're waiting for the moving of the water. Here's what they believe. They believe that there's an angel that goes down right at a certain season to the pool and they and troubled the water and whosoever then first after the trouble of the water stepped in was made whole from whatsoever disease he had and there was a certain man that was there had an infirmity 30 and 8 years Jesus when Jesus saw him lying knew that he had been now a long time in that case he said unto him wilt thou be made whole the impotent man answered him, Sir, Mr. Jesus, I ain't got no, nobody when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. And even when I'm coming, uh, there's somebody who always jumps in before me. Jesus totally ignored all of that and said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and he took up his bed and walked. Here's my favorite part. And on the same day, was the Sabbath. Father, can nobody preach like you? As a matter of fact, we can all say that you are our favorite preacher. So preach to us today as only you can. We'll be so thankful for what you declare to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't sit down too quick. I want you to remain standing for a little bit. Um, this is only for the individuals who are expecting something you have not seen yet. Uh, if this is not you, you can kindly make your exit if you need to. But for all of those who've been expecting and waiting on something, I want you to help me pronounce my topic to your neighbor. Just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got a prophetic word tonight. Tell them, because you waited, here's your word. Now, if they don't, if they don't praise God with you, don't, don't, you might want to either move your seat or don't talk to them for the rest of the year, okay? But tell them, tell them, here's your prophetic word. Any day now. Any day now. Any day now. Any day now. Because you waited, it's going to come any day now. Take your seat. Let's do some work. Tell your neighbor, any day now. Any day now. Any day now. If, if, if the devil were smart, if the devil were intelligent, the first thing he would take, bam, is your expectation. If he had any type of smarts within him, one thing he would first do is take your expectation. If he takes your expectation, he automatically takes your trust in God. If he takes your trust in God, he takes the blessings that God has for you. And if, in fact, expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. If he takes your expectation, he takes your chance of getting anything from God. Uh, a, a theologian once said this, a very, uh, uh, in, a very peculiar statement. This is what he says. He says, what I do not long for can neither be my hope nor uh, my despair. What that simply means is if I don't expect anything, I won't get hurt. And a lot of times what you do, watch this, you don't expect God because you're so used to being disappointed. And watch this, disappointment is not rooted within her. It's rooted within expectation that was never met. And many times when you put your trust in man, we automatically diverge our attention that we gave to man unto God. And because man disappointed us, we don't expect as we should from God. Because if he disappointed me, God, surely you will too. Woman, if you disappointed me, surely, God, you will too. But here's what you have to remember. We're going to get to the text real quick. You ready? Watch this. The promise of God and the performance of God happens at the same time. Let me say that one more time. The performance of God and the promise of God happens at the exact same time. Now, the reason that makes no sense to you is because in this thing called earth, we have a thing called time. And in this thing called time, we have a cussing word that we got to all deal with called waiting. 
uh, the thing that we don't want to deal with. We don't ask who um, because we automatically know who. We don't, we don't ask what because we typically know what. We don't even ask how because it's not our responsibility. That's one, there's one question that makes church folk backslide every day. That's the question of the intercessor, the question of the prophet. And uh, if you could be honest, you've asked this question before too. God, when? When are you going to do it? When are you going to manifest it? But here's the thing you've got to remember. God does not dwell in this earth. It, it, that simply means God is not bound by time. He dwells in eternity. There is no time in God. Hey, let me prove it to you. Watch this. In Genesis, the world was full of darkness, and God got just sick and tired of looking at nothing. So this is what he said. Let there be light. Watch. And immediately there was light. That makes no sense. Watch this. If you look all down through Genesis chapter 1, you see a whole list. God said, 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 God said. And when God stopped talking, Bible says God saw. Can I encourage you for a moment? The reason why you have not seen what God said, it might not be the chance that he's neglected you. Sometimes you ain't seen it because God ain't done talking about it. And the reason why you haven't seen some stuff yet is because God still got something to say about what you're waiting on him to do. And whenever God stops talking, it immediately becomes what God said. So the reason why you can praise him even though you got to wait on it, watch this, it's because since he's spoken in eternity where there is no time, I hope you catch this and praise him for it. The minute he speaks it, it's already done. And they don't understand why you praise him the way you do after you believe God for years and have not seen it yet. The reason why I praise him is because I know there's a word that says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their ship. They're going to mount up with wings like that. I know that God is not a man that he should lie. Come on church. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Because if he said it he already did it. Can, can you please tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor I don't know what you're believing God for. But tell him that it's already done. Now, they don't believe that because they think you got the power to do it. Tell somebody else. Tell them, say, neighbor, I got a word for you today that you can praise God now because it's already taught. It's already taught. It's all, can you do me a favor? If you're expecting anything for about three good seconds, just praise him because he's already done it. He's already Watch this, and here's your praise point. I might not see it today, but he's already done it. And anything, I, I'm going to see what God said. Here it is, sit down. Here it is, the Bible brings us to this point. And what happens here, John, the gospel writer, he gives us uh, a very easy job. When we don't enter into this text oblivious. He gives us the background. What's up? He gives us the background, gives us the history, gives us the setting, gives us the context of surrounding where we are. Here's what he says. He says, now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there's a pool, and this pool is called Bethesda. Literally in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, right? And these people who have a whole bunch of problems, there are thousands of people gathered at this pool because they got a problem. Uh, here's what they believe. They believe there's an angel who comes and shakes up the water a little bit, and whoever Jump, it's on a first come, first serve basis. Whoever jumps in first, they got the healing. Uh, whoever dismissed, they just got to wait till the next time, right? Here it is. Now, there is uh, a few complexities in this that I have to look at now because the Bible says this that in Jerusalem, there's a place that has a pool. Now, the reason why that's so confusing to me is because Jerusalem, if you know anything geographically about it, it is a desert, hot, dry, uh, thirsty place. Now, it, it, there's no water in Jerusalem. If you said there's a pool in Galilee, that makes total sense. But this pool is in Jerusalem. Makes absolutely no sense. And so now, if there's a multitude of people, meaning that there's at least a thousand people at this pool, what's the chances of anyone getting into that one body of water at the exact time that they that the angel decides to trouble it. Now we have to deal with this impossibility that there's a likely chance that you won't get the healing. 
room. Now, now here's another thing we have to look at now. This pool is called Bethesda. Hebrew term Beth Zayah. The Beth Zayah. The two words Beth and Zayah. The Beth meaning house. Zayah the being uh, the Greek word for mercy. So this is literally the house of mercy. Notice here. These people need a miracle. But they are not at the house of miracles. They're at the house of mercy. One more time. Let me tell you that back. They need a miracle, but they're not at the house of miracles. They're at the house of mercy. Can I tell you something? Let me lean into this a little bit. Let me give you a secret. When you need something that only God can do, a miracle is not what you need. What you need is mercy. Now, now the reason why you don't understand it, let me help you understand. Because the uh, now I need I, I need about seven real people right here. Because the, here's the truth of the matter: you deserve the problem you got. You deserve, okay, I didn't get no real, you deserve the issue you got. And why you need mercy is mercy, watch this, does not give me the punishment I rightfully deserve. The reason I'm not looking for, the reason I'm looking for mercy is because God, I know I really deserve the problem I got. But if you give me mercy, the punishment that I deserve, you skated right on by. I need you to tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I know about mercy, I know about mercy. But, but here, here's the complexity I got. Because although they're at the, they're at the house of mercy, six, my problem is this. How can I be around all this mercy but still have the same problem? Uh, they can, okay, can, here's the lie that the church told you. If you praise long enough, the problem going to go away. If you pray long enough, the problem going to go away. If you just worship, slop, fall out, roll around the floor, the problem's going to go away. Can I get a witness that, listen, I danced, I praised, I spoke in tongues, I worship, and when I stopped, the problem was still there. Okay, I don't have no real voice. Let me try that one more time. I did everything I could to get rid of the problem. But out of all the, th I read my word, I believed God, I trusted him, I had faith. But even though I did all of that, I still had the same problem. This is where they are. These multitudes of people, bro, they are grouped by uh, issues. The blind are with the blind. The halt are with the halt. The mute are with the mute. The dharma with the dom. The gossipers are with the gossipers. The dramatic folk with the dramatic folk. The gossipers with the, the trifling Jezebels with the trifling Jezebels. Watch this. They're all grouped by the same issue. The only common denominator they all have is that we all got the same problem. Watch this. They're expecting to get better, but they're hanging around people who got the same problem as them. Let me give you a secret of life. Come here, church. Let me give you a secret. If you ever want to get better, stop hanging around people that got the same problem as you. Now, I know y'all don't like that, but let me try that one, one more time. If you ever want to get better, get from around the people that are making you worse. If you, if you want to get rich, get cut the, the broke folks off. If you're trying to, uh, if you're hanging around horny and uh, seductive, fornicate people, I ain't never going to get my horny thoughts under subject. I know that's a little, can you please tell your neighbor, say neighbor, get some real friends, get some real you, you know what I've learned, Pastor? Sometimes your friends ain't friends. Sometimes they just assassins that you just so happen to like. And sometimes your friends ain't friends. Sometimes they just sell me stuck in the same place you want. Listen, if I want to get better, I got to get from around the people that making me worse. This is where they are. Bam, they're trying to get better, but they're around the same people uh, that got the same problem as them. But, but there, oh, y'all sit down, got a little bit more fun to do. That, but there's a certain man here, a man with a different kind of problem than everybody else. Uh, he has a paralyzed problem. He's stuck. He's been stuck in this same place for 30 eight years Jesus the Christ out of all these different people you have this man who's been stuck here for 38 years this man we don't even know him by name we just identify him by his issue he's been here for 38 years check this out he's laid at this pool the whole time trying to get his healing so this man's problem is now the fact that his sight goes beyond his apprehension let me say that another way. He's able to see his answer, but he's not able to reach it. Have you 
ever been there? You've been stuck in the same spot for so long. I know you know what I'm talking about. I feel you're kicking. You've been staying in the same spot for so long. I see my answer, but for some reason, I can't seem to grasp it. This is the man's problem. Not only that, y'all, but check this out. Not only is he able to see the to see the answer and not reach it. He has to watch everybody else get the thing that he wants but can't get. Now, now I need my real folks right here who know you saved, but you know you got a little nug of your buck in you. Don't it get on your nerves to be living holy, righteous, sanctified, and everything else. But while everybody else doing exactly what they want to do, you still in lack and they getting the blessing that you really want. You got co-workers that lie, cheat, and steal. You run a stoplight and you getting convicted and they still getting blessed. How in the world can I watch everybody else get my thing that I'm praying for? and I still go and lack. Can I tell you a secret? You know that God is getting ready to bless you when the people closest to you are getting the thing you're praying about. Uh, okay, that didn't work for you. Let me tell you the quickest way to get a blessing. When you can praise God that somebody else is getting what you've been praying about. Because I, if I praise God for you, I hope you can praise me right here. You ready? If I can praise God for you, I know two words. I'm next. I need you to grab your neighbor by their hand for me, please. Grab that hand and shake that hand like a salt shaker. And say, neighbor, I know you've been blessed before. But I got news for you that it's my turn next. Yes, it is. I know I get, because if he's blessing my neighbor, I know he's in my neighborhood. God is getting ready to bless my life. If you know that your next do me a favor, lift your hands. Throw your head back. Open your mouth. Watch this. And give him a shot for being next. For being next. Uh, yes it is uh, but 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 here, here's the praise point I need if I was at my church they'll jump and scream right here but watch this in the nick of time when this man has been going through this problem for so long I hope I get a praise are you ready Jesus shows up Oh, I feel like I'm at home now. Jesus shows up. Watch this. Watch this. Check this out. Bible says he shows up knowing that his man has been here for a long time. Uh, now we gotta put on our thinking cap now oh, y'all check this out this man has had this problem for 38 years Jesus was only alive for 33 uh, check this out the, the man had the problem 38 years Jesus has only been alive for 33 years man had the problem longer than Jesus been alive but yet Jesus shows up knowing all the details can I get a praiser here that when Jesus shows up you ain't gotta tell all your secrets he ain't like your prayer partner that spread everything about you he ain't like your best friend that put all your business on Facebook when he shows up he knows everything he needs to I need you to tell someone Jesus no girl Jesus no boy he you know, Jesus knows everything. He, he shows up now. And when he shows up, he asks him one simple question. He said, man, will you uh, just decide to be made whole? When uh, will you decide to be healed? Here is the funny thing to me. Here is the interesting thing. Jesus never commanded this man. Y'all sit down, sit down. Jesus never commands this man's healing. He never demands this man to be healed. He Watch this. I hope you watch this. He put his healing in his choice. Can I make you mad? Can I jab you up below the belt real quick? If you ain't healed just because you don't want to be. I knew I wouldn't get too many amen just then. It's all right. I'm going to get you. He, he, he knew. He, want, he asked him, will you just be made whole? He put this healing because he, you have to understand healing is always made available to you. It's just your decision to receive the healing. Let go of what it is you need to be healed from. But, but here is, I'm going to say something that's going to sound weird. And I want you to hear me out. Don't throw daggers at me yet. Watch this. This is why you cannot live off of God's promises. You have to live off of God's decisions. Let me say that one more time. You cannot live off of God's promises. Live off of his decision. I'm going to say something that's going to make you mad. You ready? He never promised he was going to heal you. 
Uh, yeah. He never promised he was going to heal you. But watch this. He decided that since they put stripes on me, ain't no business in two of us being hurt. So since I got hurt for you with my stripes, I decide that you're going to be healed. He never promised he was going to pay your bill off. He just decided that he was going to supply all your need. Come on, church. According to his riches and glory in Christ, it's all about his decision. But Jesus had to ask this man, will you be made whole? Because he knew the truth of this situation. That so, I hope, let me get some real folks, and I don't want you to think about nobody specific because I don't want you to come to the altar and repent. But watch this. You know, Jesus knew, like some of us know, that some people just enjoy living in their issue. Some people just enjoy living in gossip. Some folks just enjoy being trifling. Some people enjoy being I ain't going to say that. Some people enjoy living in a life that goes against what God wants. And watch this. When Jesus asks this man, will you be made whole? Look what this man does. He starts being the victim according from everybody else. He said, well, Jesus, the truth is um, I ain't got nobody to put me in the water. And even when somebody does help me, somebody always gets in before me. He now becomes the victim and puts the blame on everybody else. Uh, let, uh, lean into this, lean into this. Can you help me out here? How many of you know people that when the problem shows up, it's never them, it's always somebody else? Uh, some people, they ain't never the issue. Some, the issue always somebody else. It's always somebody else, the reason as to why they're in it. Here's the, the Bible says this, that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you free. And sometimes the truth is, you are the problem. Uh, can you please get an attitude with your, I mean, roll your neck and everything. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the truth is, you've been a problem, and I have to. Go ahead, tell the truth. I have to. Listen, come on, Maury, you are the father. Uh, sometimes you are the issue. And it's a trick. Listen to me, church. It's a trick of the enemy to cause you to be a victim and pass the blame on everybody else. But here's what he says. When he says what he says to Jesus, he's literally saying this. Um, Jesus, yes, I do want to be made whole. But the truth is, I've done everything that I can, and I just don't know how. Uh, he says, yeah, Jesus, I really, I really do want to be healed. I'm tired of being here. I do. But I've done everything I can, and I just don't know what else to do. I, I need about 14 praises right here. Are you ready? Thank God that it's never your responsibility to know how it's going to be done. Can, can I tell you why you've been stressed, why you've been frustrated in life? It's because you're trying to figure out how when it's not your responsibility. Let me get a praise. Are you ready? Because if you knew how, you would be God. Oh, man. If you knew how, you would be God. You can fix everything else. But thank God that when I don't know how, I serve the God of the how. And I know I can cast my care on him because the man that I do, he knows everything I need to do to fix where I am. Just please, can you get on your neighbor's nerve for me because I can't reach him? Tell your neighbor God knows how. Yes, he does. Uh, oh, man, this, this ain't in my notes, but I got to put this out here. Here's a praise point that I see now because he starts being a victim and passes the blame on everybody else. Jesus totally ignores him and says, well, man, all I need you to do is rise, take up your bed, and walk. Here's my praise point that you missed in the text because you read too fast. Watch this. Sometimes you got to give God praise over the fact that he ignored you when you said something crazy. Uh, now you always asking God to speak But sometimes I just thank God That when I asked him if I could give up He ignored me I just thank God when, when I wanted him to take me out of here He totally ignored me I need you to grab your neighbor's hand Please grab them for real And just tell them the truth Say neighbor I've said some crazy stuff before And the reason why I praise God it's when I said what I said, God ignored me. I, so, oh, are you ready? I need you to do a hard thing. You ready? I need you to do a hard thing. For about five good seconds, I need you to praise God for his ignorance. 
You asked God to throw in the towel, he ignored you. You asked God to get that boy that was no good, he ignored you. You asked God for that homish girl, he ignored you. I need you to slap a high five to a neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad God ignored me. I'm glad he did. Oh, that just got real, real. I'm sorry. Felt like I was at home for a second. I thank God he ignored what I said. But watch this. He ignores this man and just gives him three instructions. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. One more time. He says, rise, take up your bed, and walk. One more time, class. First thing, rise. Second thing. Third thing. I like y'all. Now, now, before we get into this, I got to do a little teaching real quick, if y'all don't mind. Notice this. Jesus does not say, I'm going to take you to the water. He says, rise, take up your path, and walk. What, what we would have done, we would have helped the man get to the water. But Jesus don't even worry about the water. He just says, man, rise, take up your bed, and do what else? Now, you got to understand this. Now, we are in the gospel according to John, right? This is part of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. However, John is not the synoptic gospel. S-Y-N-O-P-T-I-C. Sin, optic. Sin, synchronized, or same optic view or perspective. Same view, same perspective. Y'all get it. It simply means this. What you see in Matthew, you're more than likely to find it in Mark and Luke. What you find in Mark, you'll probably find it in Matthew and Luke. What you find in Luke, you'll probably find it in Matthew and Mark. Y'all get what I'm saying. What was they all wanted to deal with what Jesus taught and what Jesus did and all these different things. Always recorded the sermons of Jesus. They always recorded what Jesus taught to the disciples. But I just love John's like some of us. John's just so churchy. He didn't want to deal with none he taught. He didn't want to deal with nothing he did. The minute I need a Jesus church now, watch this. The minute he picks up the pen and starts writing his book, he said, in the beginning was the book what he taught. In the beginning was the word and in the word with the in the word was God and the word was God and it became flesh dwelt upon he didn't want to deal with what Jesus taught he wanted to deal with who Jesus was uh, let me say that one more time he didn't worry about what Jesus taught he worried about who Jesus was and the reason why he had to write this thing now this is gonna take about 21 praises I hope you catch it watch this the reason why John had to write this story in here is because he had to show you that Jesus didn't need to bring him to the water I hope you praise and watch this because when you can't get to the water I'll bring the water to you because I'm not just Jesus I you just don't need water because I am the living water Y'all didn't catch none of that. Let me try it again. I ain't got to bring you to the water. Because if you know who I am, I am the living water. Oh, I feel a prophetic word here. That simply means this. What you can't get to, he will become and come to you. Uh, I don't know what you stand in need of, church. But whatever you need, God got the power to become and he'll come to you. I hear the monster. I feel the prophetic and all in now. I don't know who Singleton is, but I tell you today, whatever you need, God's gonna become and He's gonna come to you. I need you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, whatever you need from God, He's going to become and He's gonna come to you. Let me get a praise. You really become down your road. God knows how to become money, and when you can't get the money, money will come to you. If you can't get to the healing, He'll become it and He'll come to you. If you need favor, He'll be coming and he'll come to you. I need you to grab your neighbor's hand one last time for me. Shake that hand like it's a Polaroid picture and say, neighbor, if you don't praise him for this, something might be wrong. But tell him, say, whatever you need, God's going to become and he's going to step in. He's going to step in the money, step in the sickness, step in the favor, step in the grace, step in the mercy. God He's going to step in. I need you to tell your whole row. God's going to step in this one. He's going to step. Uh, and he's going to do it for the Singleton family. I don't know who you are. God's going to do it. Tell your neighbor God's going to do it for you. He's going to do it for you. Check this out. Watch this. Now he gives him three instructions. 
You ready? He says, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Time to do some work. He says, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Now, notice this. He, he could not just say rise and walk, because if he rise, walked, and left the bed, watch this. He got something to go back to. Uh, he, he couldn't leave the bed because how can, oh, I, I need I need take take your halo off. We all here. How many times have you left the thing and then went back because you still had the option? Uh, that's why sometimes I need a praise. I need a praise. That's why sometimes you got to burn some bridges, baby. Because even when I get lonely, I want to go back. I can't. I ain't got no way to get. I got to block the number, block the Facebook, block the Snapchat, block. I need to do whatever I got to do to remove the. Can you tell your neighbor, prophesy to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a word for you that God's going to take away the option. I said, God's going to take away the option. When you want to go back, when you ain't got the power to leave it, it's going to leave you. Ah, thank you to my soul. I said, God's going to take away the option. Here it is. He says, rise. Take up your bed and walk. watch me. Lean in, lean in, lean in. Check this out. Y'all ready? When he says rise, that speaks to the problem. Lean in. Y'all ready? He says rise. He had to say take up your bed. Watch this. Because rise speaks to the paralyzed problem. Watch this. Take up your bed speaks to the enabler of the problem. Watch me, watch me. He says, rise, because it deals with the problem. He had to say, take up your bed, because I can't deal with the problem if I don't deal with what gave your problem permission. Oh, I need you to tell your neighbor something. Say, neighbor, God ain't just going to deal with the problem. He's going to deal with the bed, too. He going to deal with the problem, and he going to deal with the enabler, too. Let me bring that home. Let me give that son. Let me get some real people. God knows how not only to deal with the lie. God will deal with the liar, too. He won't just deal with the rumor. He'll deal with who started the rumor, too. I need a praise right here. You ready? All my folks who got people enabling problems in your life, people trying to give your problem permission. I got a word. I hope you're praising about it. You ready? There's a word over your life. That says no weapon formed again. I need a praise church. Shall be a, I just won't deal with the problem. I'll deal with the bed. I'll deal with what gave your problem the permission. But watch this. He had to say, rise, take up your bed, and do what else? One more time. He said, rise, take up your bed, and what else? Say that W word real loud. Say it. Now watch this. Rise speaks to his problem. Take up your bed speaks to the enabler of his problem. Here's why I need a real praise. You ready? Here's the last point. Give me about five more preaching minutes and I'll be done. Here it is. He says rise to deal with the problem. Take up your bed to deal with the enabler of the problem. But walk does not talk to his problem. Walk does not even talk to anybody. Watch this. But take up your bed does not even speak to what this thing speaks to. But when he says walk, I hope you praise him. When he says walk, it deals with everybody else that thought he was going to be stuck there. Now, if you ain't got nobody praying against you, you won't understand this. But every time God says walk, he talks to everybody that thought you was going to stay broke. Thought you were going to stay hurt. Thought you were going to stay bound. Thought you were going to stay under. Thought you were going to be defeated. Thought you were going to be depleted. I need you to tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God's getting ready to give me the power to walk. And when I walk... Every devil in hell that thought I was going to stay there. Every witch, warlock, imp, and curse that thought I would never make it. Every hellish person in church that thought I was going to stay back. They getting ready to see that whatever they said, well, everything they said, is getting ready to be turned around. Grab your neighbor by their hand for me. I'm ready to go to church now. Grab your neighbor's hand for me. I'm going to need you to shake it like you're trying to shake it through the floor. And say, neighbor... God's getting ready to give you the power, not just to get up, 
not just to take up your bed, but every joker that thought you was going to stay. God getting ready to prove to every liar that God's getting ready to turn that thing around. Do me a favor, turn around about three times and say, God getting ready to turn everything around for my good. Everybody that thought I would stay hinder, I got a word for them that you saw me broke, you saw me hinder, you saw me defeated. But here you pray for you ready. But anything now, God getting ready to bring me up and take me out. Do me a favor. Grab your neighbor by their hand. And this is the last time I promise. Grab you a neighbor and say, neighbor, God, he's getting ready to pick up your bed. And what trying to hold you, you are getting ready to hold it. What trying to keep you down, God, giving you the power to pick it back up. And God's getting ready to take you higher. Yeah, I need you to look at someone and say, oh, neighbor, God, God getting ready to give you a miracle. God getting ready to, I'm done with this thing. God getting ready to give you a breakthrough. And I need you to prophesy to your neighbor. Say, oh, neighbor, I don't know when, I don't know how. All I know is anything now, anything now, anything now, anything now. Every devil, every witch, every woman, every curse, every incantation, all black magic, all white magic, they don't see that you thought I was stuck. But anything now, they that way, they that way. Upon the Lord, shine, renew their strength. You're going to mount up with the wings like an eagle. You're going to walk and not get weary. You're going to run and not faint. Do me a favor. Move out of your seat. Go to about seven people and say, God's going to do it any day now. Any day now. Any day now. People don't understand how you've been praising. People don't understand why you're still believing. All I know is that while I'm waiting, I'm telling myself anything now. I don't know when, but I'm waiting on you. That anything now, anything now, anything now, I'm looking for a praiser. Anything now, anything now, sooner than later. God, don't bring me out. God, don't bring me up. And I got a word. If you ain't praising, I'm gone. All the praises, lift your hands. I got a word that because you waited and because you believe a word that says anything now, I got a word. I hope you can praise him for it. And your word is. Ears have not heard, and eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard, and eyes have not seen. Haven't heard, and eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. What God getting ready? do for you any day now, 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 lift your hands, throw your big head back, open your big mouth and give them a big shout. I shut my toe, I say any day now, God's gonna do it, and 
And because you waited, because you waited, because you waited, God. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm done. But, 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 here's, here's my favorite part about all of this. Check this out. All of this happened on the Sabbath day. You really missed your place to shout. Let me try that again. All of this happened on the Sabbath day. Ain't nothing supposed to be done on the Sabbath day. You don't work. You don't dance. Don't you dare speak in tongues. You're going to jail. <laughs> clink, clink. <laughs> you ain't supposed to do nothing on the Sabbath day. According to the church folk, y'all missed it. Watch this. According to the church folk, this man shouldn't have got his healing because his healing went on their program. Watch this. If you missed this, you just missed it. You ready? This man got his healing and it went up to the church folk to decide whether he needed it or not. Okay, you missed that one. Watch this. This was going to make me lose it. This man got his healing. Oh, oh. This man got his healing, check this out. Nothing is supposed to be done on the Sabbath day. Hope you praise, I, want, I mean, I hope you lose it for real. I hope like a whole riot started. Stuff. Check this out. Because it was the Sabbath day, this man got his healing, even though he wasn't supposed to. Let me tell you why your neighbor could not praise just then. They think they supposed to get what they want. But I, I need you to look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not supposed to be here. But thank God that he did it anyway. I want home. I wasn't supposed to be brought out. But thank God he did it anyway. He healed me anyway. Brought me out anyway. Gave me the money anyway. Gave me the job anyway. And anything that, anything that, God gonna do what I don't even deserve. Anything that, God's gonna do what he ain't supposed to. God gonna break a rule for you. God's gonna do it. I need you to move out your seat and tell him, God's gonna do it. Anything that, anything that,
semis and stuff like that. There's one lesson he taught. Now, I feel a riot about to break out here. I'm just telling y'all, talking about my granddaddy, God bless his soul. He taught his employees one thing, Elder. He said, one thing you cannot do in these semis. You can't, you can't turn too quick. Because if you turn too quick, the whole truck will topple over. You ready for your riot? You ready? I mean, it's gonna break out hard. You ready? He taught them, you can't take that big truck. You can't turn too quick, it's gonna top a little thing over. It's not gonna be good. Man cannot take big stuff and make quick turns. God is the only one I know that can take a big thing and make a real quick turn. Now, I don't know who's been sitting, but I want you to turn around real quick and just say he gonna take a big thing and he gonna make a he gonna make a quick turn. 
He gonna do it any day now. A big thing gonna make a quick turn. A big thing gonna make. while you praise him, what tried to take your mother, it will not take you. And what the, I don't know, I want somebody to praise him for this. Lady, while you praise him, I heard the Lord say this. When the doctor don't have a cure, God got a healing. When the next time you go, I tell you, lady, God going to take that big thing and he going to make a quick turn. So I'm going to turn around real quick, my three times, and say he's going to turn a big thing, a big thing. A big thing. A big this time next week but tell him say neighbor here's your announcement he just turned it he just turned it he just turned it he just turned it
go back to like last Thursday. You couldn't even tell people about that thing that happened and you laid in your bed around like, like 11, 14, something like that. And you asked God this question. You said, God, why does it always have to be me? Heard the Lord say that even, mm, mm, even what from what tried to literally take your life in 2017, around the middle of the year, the Lord said today, what tried to kill you then, when you get home, uh -oh, ha, ha, ha. when you get home, the same thing that you left from will not be there. Hope somebody can praise God for you when I say this. And the Egyptians you see today, you will see the God born forever. It's over now. Every hand lifted, I feel them talking now. 